Question marks? Oh, well. Um, I'm here. This is my first time giving a presentation, so if it's terrible, just let me know. <laughs> I'll not take it to heart. I'm Zach Tackett. I'm an IT integration specialist at Marshall University. Um, if you want to contact me, you can hit me up through my email, my website, or my Twitter account. I am giving a presentation talk on a Python application, more or less script that I wrote that would monitor and keep tabs on my home network. Um, I'll go into a little bit of depth about why I wanted to do this, but the main thing that I started noticing was my connection would intermittently drop. It mainly happened in the evenings when me or my wife were watching Netflix or doing something on our tablets or laptops. After the first few days of this happening, I started to suspect that somebody was more or less trying to get into my network without me knowing. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Wi-Fi deauthentication attacks, but that was the first thing that came to mind after the first few days of this happening. So I started with what I knew. I started trying to run a few different types of scans on the network to try and see if there was anybody that had success successfully gotten through into my homeland. First series of scans that I started running, running was in, in map. Um, I just wanted to do ping scans. I didn't care about what ports were open. I just wanted to see and identify what hosts were currently connected. And I used a, di a, a, a two different types of scans in MAP and ARP. ARP sp displayed specifically the hosts that were connected recently or within the last several hours. This is the one that really showed me the results of what I was looking for. It displayed, I, I passed the dash A and tags to it, our options, in order to get back both the MAC address and the IP address that the device was connected to. I, on my router, there is, I don't know how many different types of routers are like this, but there is an option where you can go and view what devices are currently connected to the DHCP protocol or clients list. On there, I could see that someone had, in fact, gotten into my network. And not that it was really any fault of my own. I would own up to it if it was, but they had just knew how to run a several different types of scans and how to D off my network and get into it that way. Um, I had initial suspicions of who it could be. I had some new neighbors that had just recently moved up into a, an apartment above me and my wife, but I wasn't certain. I didn't want to outright call them out on it or make any assumptions if I wasn't clear on who it was per se. Uh, the end map that I ran was dash SN. It's just a ping scan. Pings every IP in the network range. Um, it showed only the currently connected devices. It was not showing the devices in question that were showing up in my DHCP clients list on my router. However, in our ARP did show the devices in question. I was able to track down not only what the MAC address of their devices were that they were connecting with, but I was able to get the client name of the devices that they were connected with. And of course, you know, some people don't think, hey, if I just use my first name and name my iPhone, Zach's iPhone, nobody's going to suspect or know if I connect to their network. So the initial idea of a Wi-Fi wireless deauthentication attack definitely proved to be true. And the scans had also proven my initial suspicions on it poss being possibly my new neighbors that had just moved in. And the biggest thing is they would connect when they knew we were not home. So they didn't would think that we didn't know what was going on. So the entire idea of the program was with the knowledge that they were trying to or were connecting when we were not home or when we were shopping or running around town or something, I had the idea of creating an application or a program that would run in a cron job on a Raspberry Pi I already had 
that would continuously monitor my home network. It would run every couple of hours through a cron job, and if any unknown devices were found connected to the network, it would send me a notification. Putting it all together, I used the two different NMAP and ARP scans. The whole concept was to identify any and all unknown connected devices, and I would use a predefined dictionary, Python dictionary, of known MAC addresses. So any devices that my I own, my wife own, that we used or were connected to the network, I created a predefined list of their MAC addresses to test against in the scan results. And at the end, I would set it up to where it would send me an SMS notification straight to my phone when it would identify any unknown hosts. And I set this all up to run in a cron job on a Raspberry Pi. This is what the results look like. It just sends me a straight text, no text notification straight to my device. I know the slides are short, but I really just wanted to show you, be able to show you guys the actual code that I wrote. Can everybody see that all right? Do I need to switch it? Yeah. So as you can see, it's really just a basic Python setup. I mean, I imported what details I needed. Let me see if I can... No, just if they're connected. I had not been able to figure out how to alert myself if somebody had connect, like was hitting it or was scanning it. Okay. So, as you can see, I just got the basic functions to run the nmap scan and parse it. Um, if you notice down here and I'm deleting certain artifacts or items from the list that I used to populate. Those, the items that I were de deleting in question were, say, the router's IP address, that it was the host IP address or the MAC address connected to that router. I run the ARP scan and parse it. And here I'm using regexes to parse out IP address to MAC address and also deleting unneeded so router IP and then gateway IP MAC address here is where I'm taking the known MACs that I created pre-populated predefined dictionary of MACs I'm getting a list of, or dictionary, of all the connected Macs that were returned. So it looks through that. If it finds any that are if it scans through, if any of the Macs or devices that are connected hits or comes back with a positive find in the known max dictionary, it'll create a, another list or a text text string file. And that gets passed to the notification. And then I use the SM, SMTP Python library in order to create the notification. And if anybody wants this, I can put it up on my website if anybody wants to reach out and grab it. It's not highly sophisticated. It's I usually use Python just for scripting purposes, not for writing object-oriented applications or anything highly sophisticated. About how long would you say it took you to just set all of it up? Was it a lot? Did you have to make a bunch of it like from scratch or were you able to find a lot of what you already A lot of it was just poking around on the web trying to figure out 
basically taking the initial idea of what I wanted it to do and building it from scratch. So as you can see up at the top, not a lot of the, I guess, imports that I'm using are predefined, created packages or anything. They're mostly just built in Python libraries. But in total, it probably took me two or three weeks to get it to this spot to get everything fully working and running successfully in the cron. And here is the known max that I created in order to test everything by. Just if you're wondering, I did spoof all these, so it's not actually the MAC addresses connected to my devices. I do some stupid stuff, but not that stupid, I don't think. But it does work. As you can see from that last slide, me and my wife were at the mall about two weeks ago, and I set it up just to see if it would work. I have a downstairs neighbor that I share my Wi-Fi with on a guest network. I have his controls fairly limited, to say the least. But I had taken his MAC addresses out of the predefined list so that it would pause, return a positive or a un found unknown device in the network. And it sent me a text message, and that one that it showed is actually the one that we received while I was out of town. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. So, what was the series of events you went through? Um, obviously, once you find that someone's attached to your network, you know, then the first thing you do be they change your Wi-Fi password. Yeah. Or, 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 I mean, you went through. Yeah. I actually made the Wi-Fi name hidden. That was the first thing I did, and then changed the password. So now, I mean. I'm not, I haven't used Aircrack in about four or five years, but I know back then you could even find hidden networks using that. So it's not completely fault proof or foolproof, but it still works to an extent. So rather than try to catch them back on your network by leaving everything open, well, not everything open. <laughs> no. You, you, you went ahead and changed your wireless. Yeah. Password yeah, I made it a lot more complex than what it was, even though. It, I was not using the default router password. I had created randomly generated one online and used that. But even with the deauthentication attack, they're getting that back directly. Anybody else? So you're still having a problem with these people protecting you? No, no. Okay. They were uh, actually kicked out not too long after this happened, about a month or two after this happened, because they were doing some very nefarious, sketchy things out of their apartment. Yeah, some great folks. So once you changed your Wi-Fi password, did you see them connect anymore? No. Okay. But I more or less did this after the fact, after I changed everything, just so if it was to happen in the future, I would be notified. So did you, did you kind of just do this idea specifically just because, like, you had a pile laying around? Yeah, I have a, it's a Raspberry Pi that I had taken, I was running like RetroPi on it, and that kept crashing, so I ended up turning that into a wireless home camera. And I just SSH that onto the camera, and it runs, so it's kind of like a dual home surveillance system, I guess. Anybody else? Next time, have a second router. <laughs> and uh, leave that one open. Have a little more fun with it. Like a pineapple? Wi-Fi pineapple? Yeah. I thought about it, but I... You can only do so much. Yeah. <laughs> I know my presentation's a little short-lived in comparison to the whole hour, but this is my first time. You guys can check out the cool Metasploit class or something. <laughs> so where were you with this code? Um, I have a GitHub account, but I haven't used it in years. But I'll probably just attach it as a text file or a virtual download on my website, which I can pull up real quick.
when I disconnected this earlier, it crashed all of my running programs. Yeah, it's on my website, so I didn't really care. Because this is what I use for like freelance or any of my consulting work. They're just using it to watch Netflix and stream. I mean, among other things. I know, I know. I, I know, I really thought about it. But that... In hindsight, really. Even my wife said she would have done it if she knew how. She at least make them look at something they didn't want to see. You can always open up the Wi-Fi network. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, my phone would probably be buzzing off the charts then. But nobody said second router. That. Yeah, I have one lying around that I've been thinking about installing DDW, but DDWRT on, just to have leaving leave lying around so somebody can get into it. Which back when I was still in school I was experimenting with Wi-Fi testing and everything and had two, three, four different routers running. But that was five years ago. But down down below is my contact information. I'll probably just throw up a link or something for my presentation. Any links anybody wants. I'll add the slides even though they're kind of short. Um, like I said, I use Python mostly just for scripting. Um, another project that I had developed was an online job scraper. I was working at Marshall the first time in the College of Education and wrote a screen scraper basically that would scan Ohio University's job postings web page and it would scan through and paginate itself through each listings and if it found anything that was IT based it would copy the job title and the link directly to the application and send that to me in a text message. Yes. Not so much an easy to guess, but yeah, yeah, it wasn't very complex. It was maybe eight to ten characters in length, and I mean, it was random numbers and numerical characters, but I think they was just able to pick it out from the pos my guess would be a reaver attack. One of the people that was living up there was a computer science student in a local community college that I went to, so I knew he probably had some idea of what he was doing or was able to just YouTube it or Google it, but I had W... It definitely wasn't a WPS attack because I always turn WPS off by default on any of the routers I get if they support it. So I just initial initially went with the assumption that it was a deauthentication attack just because our connection was dropping so constantly, so frequently. Any more questions? Got a few answers left. Thank you, guys. There's more people here than what I thought there would be.